Are you looking for an all-natural way to get rid of slugs and snails and many other pests in your garden? Well, this might be the solution right here. Join me as I tell you about these feathers and hunting snipe in your garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and tonight I'm hunting snipe. I'm hunting garden snipe in my own garden. And garden snipes are really quite unique in the animal world because once a year, a very important thing happens, and that's today. It's just after midnight. It's April 1st. And on this day, the mating cycle of the garden snipe and the molting cycle of the garden snipe overlap. And so I'm going out in the garden with a burlap bag and some marshmallows on the hunt for a magical feather that can get rid of slugs and snails and other pests in your garden. So come along with me. I've outfitted my night goggles with a camera so you can see what I see as I go on the hunt. So now we'll start our snipe hunt. This is an ideal night. I've been waiting for this for pretty much a year. Now, it's, it helps to be silent, but the snipe know we're coming. They're very perceptive, great sense of smell. I can listen and hope that I hear their movement, but it's so rare to actually see one. They're watching us, but we just really can't watch them. They're masters at hiding and blending in. And so I've been trying to prepare my landscape. These are my bags of leaves lined up to help direct the snipe I have piles of brush. That's one of their favorite places to hide. So my plan is piles of brush with these bags of leaves guiding them to the trap area. And I know that the snipe can hear me. I'm hoping that they can't understand my words, but they're watching. I'm listening, just seeing what I hear, but I can't re did, you, did you hear that? That, that might have been one, I'm not sure. Well, let's, let's get the trap set and see if we can get one of our bags filled with the snipe. I've set this area up ahead of time. It's this brush pile, and I'll put the bag underneath all of this brush. And I've got some sticks that I'll use to prop up just an opening in the bag. Doesn't need to be real big. I'll try to disguise it a little bit with some other brush. So I know that they can smell me, but they're curious. And so this is where the marshmallows come in because I'll start laying some marshmallows all around this trap and put some inside the bag. Oop. Did you hear that? I know they're out there. I still can't see anything. Okay, I'll just 
lay out some more marshmallows. Okay, we have our bag set. Now we'll just slowly back away. Let them know that we really don't mean any harm. Okay, let's go back. And now we'll shine the light. They're very curious about light. So I'll take my flashlight and I'll go ahead and shine it on the bag. That should be enough to entice them to see what I did. And they'll see the marshmallows. And then hopefully in the morning, we'll see evidence of the snipe. I was hoping with these goggles that I might actually see a snipe, but you saw what I saw and that didn't happen. I did hear what I suspected were garden snipes, but we're just going to have to wait until tomorrow to see what the results are. Now, I'm not trying to capture a snipe or kill a snipe. There's something more important than I'm after. And so let's cross our fingers, wait for the rest of the night, and then we'll see what happens in the morning. Okay, now let's see what we have in the daylight. Well, the bag looks like it's been disrupted. Looks like it's been moved. Let's go ahead and look inside and see what we find. There's no sign of marshmallows. All the marshmallows are gone. The stick, oh, this is awesome. There's one stick remaining, all the rest are gone, but this is exactly what I'm after. The feathers, there's a bunch of feathers lining the inside of this bag. This is awesome. This is exactly why we do this. Oh, I'm excited. Let me show you how we can use these. So you might know that the favorite food of snipes are snails and slugs. And so this is where the magic comes into play because Snipes are so voracious when they find a slug or a snail that they'll wipe out an entire population. And so over the eons, the slugs have developed the ability to detect the pheromones that are in snipe feathers. And so that's why these are so crazy as a way to get rid of slugs and snails. By taking these feathers, which are loaded with the pheromones that the little slugs and snails don't like, you can keep them out of your garden. And it's as simple as taking some of the feathers and just rubbing the feathers along the side of a bed. That's one reason why I really like raised beds, because when I have the snipe feathers, I can just rub the top of the wood and the slugs and the snails will stay away and never even venture into this bed. And using these bigger feathers is the easiest way, I think, to try to deter the slugs and snails in your garden. But there's another option, depending on how many feathers you get. And that's one reason why I suggest a big burlap bag like this, because April 1st, is the time of year that the snipe are going through their mating rituals and they're looking for a large enclosed dark space that's why we do this at night and if you can entice male and female snipes into your bag you'll not only get these big feathers that you can use as paint brushes around the edges but you can also find a lot of the smaller female feathers there's a notable difference in the size of the female feathers. They're much smaller, and you'll often find them in black and white colors. And so these smaller female feathers also have the pheromones, but they're not as big and not as easy to use if you want to rub the edges of your bed. So I use these small female feathers to make a tea, a snipe feather tea. And by pouring that tea on the pathways and in in-ground beds, 
I can do the same thing. I can deter those slugs and snails because these small feathers are loaded with the same pheromones. And by soaking them in a bucket of water for three or four days, that water is now energized to fight those little slimy pests. And if you keep them in a sealed jug or container over the course of your season, it lasts for many months. After I take these feathers out of that water, I'll then just go ahead and spread them throughout my garden and they'll continue to release the pheromones and deter those slugs and snails. You may be wondering why I suggested using a burlap bag to make a snipe trap. Well, it's quite simple. It's because of the rough surface, both inside and outside of the burlap bag. So when the snipe crawl in during their mating ritual, they're moving all around and this rough material is pulling away some of these loose feathers during the molting season and the bag fills up pretty quickly with those feathers. You can try this with a big plastic garbage bag, but you're not going to have the same results because that smooth surface doesn't give anything for these feathers to grab onto and then fall off. I've had mixed results using big pillowcases, but burlap is really the best way to go. And these bags come from coffee roasters. This is where all the coffee beans are shipped and then the roaster takes those beans out and the bag is left behind. So you could go to a local coffee roaster, let them know that you want to make a snipe trap and they'll probably be more than glad to give you some of these burlap bags. And I suspect that that lingering aroma of the coffee, in addition to the marshmallows, are really why my traps have such success rates because the snipe is attracted to the marshmallows and the coffee and the space and I'm left with all these wonderful feathers. I really enjoy doing these special videos on April 1st to show you something you've probably never heard of in the garden. And there's still time left in the day if you're watching this on April 1st to get a bag, to get some marshmallows, to get out, and then tonight to set your own snipe trap. And be sure and let everybody know that you're one of the few gardeners who actually did hunt for snipe in your own garden to collect the feathers and deter those slugs and snails. And to see what I did last time on April 1st, go ahead and check out this video next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.